Welcome back to another edition of the Paycast. I'm your host, Michael Pagani, joined alongside Barry Colts defenseman, Kashawn Aitchinson. Kashawn, welcome to the Paycast. Thank you again for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having me. So how have you been doing recently? Uh, you know, we mentioned off uh, camera just a bit that you're recovering from an injury. Uh, you told me that's all good. So you should be able to play in the next game then, right? Uh, yeah, I don't know about next game, but uh, we're... <laughs> We're definitely uh, I'm getting helped by a lot of the guys on the team, the staff, and helping recover fast, which is nice. And your holidays were all good. Pardon? Your holidays were all good. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. That's great to hear. Uh, let's talk about the most recent game. Obviously, coming before the holiday break, there the big eight zero win against the Glove Storm. Uh, can you speak to how important it was to secure the two points before the holiday break? Well, that was huge. Like. You know, you're going into a game just for the holiday break, and, you know, teams might not be totally into it in the headspace, trying to think about going home and just hanging out with their buddies and stuff. But, you know, it was big. We just came out fine and just kept peppering the goalie, and the goals kept going in, which was nice. Yeah, you know, it seemed like, uh, like I mentioned to you, you know, it seemed all the goal scoring came in that game. Hopefully you guys can continue that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Game. Uh, speaking of that next game, it's up against the Ottawa 67s. You know, we saw them earlier this season. They're off to, they were off to such a hot start. Uh, what's the game plan for that? Just play them as hard as you play any team. You know, you obviously realize it's the 67s and that's a big game to win. Big two points to get ahead in the standings. And, uh, yeah, you just want to come out flying, take advantage of them early, especially at the home crowd, home advantage. So yeah, just take them, take them hard early. The last time you guys played the 67s was on November 4th. That ended up being a 6-1 67s win. Uh, how do you make sure you guys end up on the right side of the game this time? I think this time, uh, you know, we've grown a lot as a team, uh, you know, just chemistry-wise and communicating and, you know, just bonding together. So I think this time, you know, we're going to come out flying. We're going to obviously come out for blood because, you know, that last game wasn't too good. We remember that for sure. So, yeah. We want to come out and, you know, for revenge. Getting into a bit of your story and a bit of who you are, uh, was there a player growing up who you wanted to model your game after? Uh, well, when I was really young, I always wanted to be a goalie, but my, my grandparents would never let that happen. So Probably next, for the better. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So next to that, I always looked to like a Drew Doughty or, yeah, some, like a really high-end defenseman like that. Do you have any Drew Doughty in you? Uh, I don't know about that. Like, maybe a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> Who is your biggest influence to get into hockey then? Uh, probably my uncle. He uh, He's not too much older than me. He's 29 now. I watched him playing, uh, playing during AAA, and he played Junior A for the Rangers and went on to play NCAA. So it was pretty cool seeing that, and it kind of pushed me to want to achieve more. You were born in Toronto, so I got to ask, did you cheer? Did you grow up cheering for the Maple Leafs? Never, no. I'm a Bruins fan. <laughs> oh, no way. A Bruins fan living in Toronto. That's hype. That's even better. Because it's yeah. like every April, you know that Boston, whenever Boston gets to Toronto, it's like, it's easy. Seven game series win. Exactly, exactly. Don't have to stress for game seven. You know the Leafs are short. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude, you're just not sweating at all in the first round of the playoffs. No, you're just sitting back, you know, just enjoying, arms crossed. Yeah. <laughs> then did you watch the Winter Classic yesterday or no? Yeah, I watched a bit of it on and off. Uh, I had uh, recovery, so I was obviously trying to switch back. Uh, what's the score? What's the score? Kind of watching. Yeah, that. exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's it's nice to see that your favorite team got to play in a winter classic. I know for me, being a Canadians fan, uh, I got I had oh right, it was the Habs and Bruins uh, in like 2015 or 2016. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that is. That, that's really funny how those things uh, work out. Um, I guess talking about your career now, uh, you played on the North York Rangers. Uh, how did that team help with your development? Uh, it helped tremendously. They gave me all the opportunity in the world to uh, take advantage. And the coach, the fence coach there, uh, Brian McLaughlin, he helped me take massive jumps and strides coming into this year and helped me be the, become the player I am today. You also had the chance of playing in the OHL Cup. Uh, to play in that big of a tournament, what will you take away from it? That, 
he can't get too high, can't get too low, you know, like those types of games and in those types of tournaments, you got to stay even, even playing field, you know, level headed. Because as soon as you get too low, like our team did, we, you saw we go 0 and 4 just because, you know, we were, we were kind of diminished and we were kind of felt like we were already out, but we still had a chance, but we just didn't, didn't take advantage. It's like whenever your confidence is so low, you kind of like, okay, when is when is the next high going to be, you know? Exactly. And it's just so fluctuating, like just up and down, up and down. It's like a roller coaster. And that was kind of like our team all year. But yeah. Let's talk about your draft because obviously that's got to be one of the more happier memories. Uh, you got drafted in the third round by the Barry Colts. What did that mean for you at the time? Oh, it was probably, it was my biggest accomplishment I've achieved as a hockey player for sure. And, you know, I was just ecstatic to be put, just to be drafted by such a good organization with good staff, good coaching and, you know, good players to help me like learn and grow as a person and a player. Uh, yeah, it was so cool. Like close to home too. So it's not like I went to the Sioux Saint <laughs> eight hours away, close to home, get to see the family a little bit more, which was nice. So then do you have many family and friends come out to your games? Yeah, almost every home game I have, like, all my family coming up, which is really cool. What do you remember from draft day? I remember stressing up, stressing out a lot. It was so stressful. Hands were sweaty, twitching a little bit. Because <laughs> a lot of players, when they ask that question, they're always, like, in school. They always have to ask their teachers, like, yeah, look, my agent's calling me. I just got drafted to the OHL. Yeah. So um, it's, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, like, luckily, I, I got to take the day off and also go on the first day. So the draft started a little later, which was nice. And, uh, yeah, like, leading up to it, it was just kind of so hectic. The amount of calls, you know, the interviews, not knowing what you're saying right. If you're saying it wrong, you're kind of stressing out about that. You're getting calls mid, mid-class. mid so Yeah, it's, it's crazy. It, it's all a mind game. Yeah. Like, all these OHL teams during the draft process and even during the combine, like, it's all just a mind game as to, you know, what questions they ask you um, and what they're trying to, you know, discover about you. Yeah, for sure. It's, yeah, it's it's very nerve-wracking, for sure. Uh, your career with the Georgetown Raiders was shortly lived as you only played one game with them. But did that one game help you get up to speed with what is it, with what it's like in the OHL? Uh, yeah, it did. Like, I, it kind of settled me down because when I was, when I was up with the team, I was a little bit nervous, you know, first year, just getting in a couple games during preseason and I was really nervous. But when I uh, played that game with Georgetown, it really settled my nerves, brought me back, like thinking that, you know, confidence wise and helped me just play the way I should play. What do you remember from your first OHL game? I was uh, sitting on the bench getting ready for uh, the Okana, and we all stood up, and I was kind of just looking around in the stands like, whoa, like this is pretty cool. Holy shit, this is real yeah. now. <laughs> exactly. How big of a mentor has Ian Lemieux been for you this season? Uh, he's been a great guy. Uh, just, you know, very kind, very welcoming. Any tips, any uh, corrections he can see that can help me, he always – He's one of the first pre- people to help me, and he's always just been, been in my corner. Now, we're entering the second half of the season. In your opinion, what are the areas in which the Barry Colts can improve uh, improve on? Uh, you know, I think we're a really good team now, and uh, whatever the coach obviously makes tries to do with tra- trades and stuff, that happens. But I think we just got to keep playing as a team and uh, keep our head on straight. For your game personally, what are some areas that you enjoy? I enjoy uh, – I, I like throwing the ball a little bit. Uh, you know, I like jumping in the rush, creating offense as much as I can. And, uh, yeah, if, uh, if I get in a tussle or two, then it happens. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're just a complete defender. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now have, for your original career with how, you know, short it has been, have you ever just, like – thrown that one enormous body check that gets the boys going oh yeah uh Saginaw at home I kind of got with his head down and <laughs> the uh the arena just erupted and I <laughs> kind of went crazy I was so fired up all the boys are fired up giving me pat, pats on the back and stuff it was cool
So I, I'm friends with Ben West on the team there. And he, and he told me that you guys have played in countless Teddy Bear Toss games, you know, but you guys have never hosted one. <laughs> what do you remember about your first Teddy Bear Toss game? My first one, uh, it was obviously not great being scored on. <laughs> so it was like, oh, geez. And then you kind of get hit in the back of the head with some teddy bears. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, my God. Just pissed me off and more than anything. <laughs> oh, 100%. Especially as the like the visiting team. You're like, man, yeah. get, get these teddy bears the hell out of here. Yeah, I'm not you're just, here for this. <laughs> exactly. You're just sitting there watching the teddy bears hit you in the face and stuff. And you're just, oh, my God. Get this up. Get this out of here. So, yeah, because, like, I, I was joking with Ben because he – I think he was on the bench for one of the games, and he he said to me, like, yeah, he got hit in the back with a couple of teddy bears. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah, I think Bill, I feel like the fans are kind of going for you, too. Like, some of them feel <laughs> – Oh, they're definitely targeting you 100%. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about Ethan Cardwell just for a second. You know, he leads the team with 18 goals. Uh, what's it like to have his scoring ability on the ice most of the game? Uh, it's it's obviously, it feels really, really calming when he's on the ice because, you know, he's going to make the right play and, you know, make a really good play out of almost nothing sometimes. And, you know, you just kind of want to get that guy the puck and, you know, he can put it in the back of the net. So, yeah. Uh, I, I have some quick fire questions for you. Uh, I guess the first one is, what has been your favorite arena to travel to so far? Favorite arena? Uh, Sioux was pretty cool. The Sioux of St. Marie, that was pretty cool. I like That's that. a long bus ride, so. Oh, well, it was a dreadful bus ride, but, it, <laughs> but at least the arena kind of made up for it. How about the worst arena? Owen Sound, by a mile. They're both... <laughs> I cause like I don't know, just with Owen Sound, I feel like their arena is just like so small and compact. I know it feels so tight out there, and you you got to make plays so fast. It feels like at that arena because the plays, the arena is so tight. <laughs> What's your favorite off ice activity to do? Ah, uh, during the summer, I love golfing. I always go like a couple times a week with buddies and stuff, so I like that a lot. Is it buddies from back home or is it with the team? Ah. Uh, both with the team and buddies from back home. Just anytime I can get on the course, really. You got to be gambling on yourself then, right? Oh, yeah, a little bit. You, you got you to believe in yourself. <laughs> now, why do you wear number 74? Uh, well, I kind of – I wanted to wear number 77 because that's what my number was growing up. And uh, I think it was, like, up in the air if I was going to fully be on the team. So they didn't really pick 77 for me, so – 74 was kind of the cl one of the closest things to it. And I like number four, so put it together. This season, and I guess throughout your OHL career, who has been the hardest player you've had to defend and why? Uh, probably Voight, just because he's really shifty, really uh, really silky, and like he, he can slip away from like uh, pressure and hits, and it's, it's tough. So then how do you play that sort of coverage? Uh, you kind of, like, obviously they have tendencies. So, you know, with him, he's always looking to pass. So you got to really play the pass and kind of more just stay tight and have a really good stick with him. How about your favorite vacation spot? Vacation. Maybe Jamaica. <laughs> Jamaica for sure because I have a little bit of family members there. Can Nice beach, nice weather all the time. It's nice. When was the last time you've been to Jamaica? Uh... Before COVID, for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Three, three years ago, four years ago now. How how about for the last quick fire question? How about the your favorite TV show? Ah, uh, probably Outer Banks. It was probably. Oh, that, did you see season three's game released on February twenty yeah. third? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm super yeah. stoked for it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Can't wait for the show because that is low key my favorite one as well. I can't wait for season three. It's been teased for way too long, and we finally get a date. I know, finally. I was so fired up. All the boys were fired up too with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it with a couple buddies, and I immediately sent them the post. And I'm like, yes, finally. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As we're closing up this interview here, do you have any advice for younger players? Um, keep working hard. Uh, you know, you might not be the best player now, or you could be the best player now. Either way, 
the job is the the road is so long like you really like it's so much longer than you think it's it's more of like a marathon than a race than a sprint so yeah just keep working i'd like to thank you again kishan for joining me on today's podcast thank you again kishan yeah thank you